Today on Cooking Crave, we're going to bring you some recipes. One is a German dish, which I'm sure is ready to please anybody's palate, and some good warm soup. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. And on today's Cooking Crave, we got a one-pan Coogan and some delicious wild rice soup. Right. All right, let's get started. Tell okay. me about this one pan Coogan. Well, this one's so easy. Coogan is definitely a, a big favorite around this area, especially with Germans. But, you know, just about any nationality likes this Coogan. You just make the crust and put it in the pan and, and put the fruit and filling on it, and it's ready to go. You don't have to, you know, be needing any dough to let it rise or whatever. So it makes it quick. So. And easy. And easy. Okay, right. let's get started. Okay. What we're going to start with is one cup sugar and um, one cup of shortening. And I'm just using Crisco here. Okay, we've got the shortening in here. And then we're also going to add two eggs. And we're just going to beat that together a little bit and then we'll add the flour and we're going to actually beat the flour and that in the mixer. So it's just a one dish thing you don't have to have a bunch of different bowls going on. Yeah, absolutely and that's so. And where did you get this recipe from mom? Well this recipe um, I got from your Aunt Eileen. We were in Fargo a couple of weeks ago and we were going through recipes and she was telling me how great this particular Coogan is and how easy it is and she works at an assisted living home uh, place and they had it there for the residents and they all just loved it so oh, I thought it'd be sounded interesting so let's just get this beat, beat up just a little bit so and the next thing we're going to add two cups of flour and it's just going to be a pinch of uh, baking powder okay. you know I would say it's going to be maybe about a, a fourth uh, a teaspoon of baking powder okay. is all you need in there. So we just want to blend that a little bit. And then, you know, it's really pliable and it's easy just to spread out in the pan by hand. You don't have to do any rolling. You just spread it out like that. So. Well, that makes it easy because if you didn't grow, if you don't, didn't grow up learning how to make dough and knead it and it's not the easiest thing just to pick up if you want to make something nice and delicious like Coogan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you know you really have to learn how to uh, you know have that consistency to know the right feel in that when you're making dough or, or in that. So, okay, we're going to add our two cups flour and a little bit of baking powder, and so we're going to just blend that up a little bit here. We'll start it on a little bit lower so we don't have flour all over. Well, if we do that, I'll just make it look like we're working harder. Yeah. Well, we just said it was easy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of scrape that down a little bit. Okay, this looks like it's mixed well. And like I said, we, you don't need to uh, beat it very long. Just till it's nice and it's blended and that, so. We're going to take that out and you're going to use a jelly roll pan and like I said this is, this is like a cookie sheet and I did uh, spray it lightly with uh, some co uh, Pam so it doesn't stick. Okay. You don't need too much on that. And I'll clean these beaters because we're going to use the, the beaters also for our, to mix our filling. Okay. So. And with this Coogan, I mean, we're going to feature two different flavors, but this is something that there are so many different flavors of Coogan out there. You really can do whatever, whatever your family likes. Absolutely. Um, what I did for some, um, for my fruit, I had some dried apricots and also uh, prunes. Prunes is one of our, uh, your dad and my favorites. And, you know, I just cooked that up and made it soft. Or else you can just go ahead and use, um, you know, any canned fruit. Just drain it well. Um, apples works great. And there's some people that just, you know, will make a cheese coogan 
and just use the cottage cheese and the cream and egg mixture and not use you know any fruit so yeah. like I said it's just so I'm just it's very versatile just grease my hands a little bit from with that shortening and we'll just press that in the pan and it's really nice and pliable so it's easy to press out this it, it ends up to be a pretty thin layer it's not a, a real thick crust it's not but it, it does um, raise a little bit okay but like I say, it, it's a little bit uh, of a different variation than what um, the normal um, yeast dough is for making Coogan so that's quite a more lengthy process when you when you're making the traditional Coogan yes you you know when you're working with yeast you have to let the dough rise and you know work it down and that so and we're going to bring it up a little bit on the sides here so that when we put the the filling on it won't just run out on the edges there okay and it's kind of nice you know not having to use a rolling pin it goes quicker and just kind of spread that out so it's even in there yeah. that See, does that, cover the whole pan really nice that's got plenty of you know dough mixture there and now this is like where you would add your fruit on it um, and like I said anywhere if apples is really good too but I would to slice my apples pretty thin okay. if I was going to use apples and uh, any canned fruit I like to see um, you know the canned fruit I like to to mash it a little bit and you know, spread it out more even than just, you know, laying individual little pieces down. So, okay. and like I said, I had just uh, made some, cooked some apricot up and I'm going to just spread that on there. And with the dried apricot or, you know, cooking the dried fruit, it's not going to be quite as, um, it'll be not as much liquid in it as even just um, draining some um, peaches or something like that, because it's going to be juicier with that okay so I'm going to just do half of the apricot and then I'm going to do half prune and you can add as much fruit as you like on there of course I think the more fruit on it the better it tastes well sure that's the sweet part of yeah it. and now like I said I also did you know cook up the prunes like that so we're going to just top that just kind of creates like a little paste almost mm -hmm. yes and even making two different fruits on here it's not going to run together you're going to have the because this does mm -hmm. make a quite a big portion so it's smart to, to do two different flavors mm -hmm. That's kind of fun because, you know, one person's favorite may not be the, the other ones, and this way you can both have what you like. Sure. So we did that, and now we're going to add um, a carton of cottage cheese, and we're going to just add, put the cottage cheese on top of that. And I'm going to, I use this, the small curds, you know, I like that versus, uh, you know, your... Uh, thicker or your large curd cottage cheese okay so we're gonna okay. You... Okay. Well, we got our cottage cheese all spread on top there now uh, the next step is we're going to uh, beat four eggs get them open And it's always a good idea to crack them in a bowl. Well, not only make sure you don't get a bad egg, but just so you don't get any droppings of <laughs> the eggshells egg and that. Yes. I have a tendency to do okay. that. Okay. So four eggs, a half a cup of sugar, and a tablespoon of flour. Okay. And one and three fourths cup cream. 
So I'm gonna scrape that out. So even though this is a simple version of how to make kugan, it doesn't take out any of the the taste with sugar and cream. You got oh. some good stuff in there. Absolutely. And then a teaspoon of vanilla. And actually, I've tried something new. I it's uh, powdered vanilla, and that was something I've new never to me. Seen powdered powdered vanilla. vanilla, and it's a little bit stronger. Uh, it's more concentrated, so where it asks for a teaspoon of vanilla, I'm only going to use about a half a teaspoon, just because it's that much more concentrated. Okay. So we're going to just beat this up together, and we'll pour that over the fruit and cottage cheese mixture, and then we'll sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon sugar on top. Okay. Okay, that looks like our egg and cream and sugar mixture is well blended so then now we're going to do is we're just going to pour that over the top so it is a real runny mixture it it's real runny right away but you know the egg the eggs in there is what's going to thicken up, up and you don't have uh it's not going to be runny once it's baked okay And you can kind of see that's going to fill up the pan pretty full. I might just not be able to, there, <laughs> <laughs> just put it all in. <laughs> and then if it runs over, that's what I'm going to say. Why did I put that last <laughs> tablespoon in there? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to sprinkle some cinnamon and sugar over the top of this. This is what's going to put it over the top, the cinnamon and the sugar. Yeah. And if you would happen to have a little shaker with the mixture in there, really, it'd probably be a little bit, you know, easier, but it just might. I did drip a little bit on my oven here, and I'll just wipe that up before we close it up. Okay, and we're going to set that for 40 minutes. And if this is at 350 degrees? Yes. Okay. Okay, so while that is baking then, we're going to start our chicken rice soup. All right. This is really easy to put together. It doesn't take very long. Um, we're going to start with uh, three tablespoons of uh, butter or margarine. And I'm going to just melt that, and then we're going to saute uh, some a half a cup of celery, and chopped celery, and a half a cup, or a, it says a half a medium onion. Okay. So, so get that warmed up there, and and we're going to just cook this and or you know saute it until they're nice and tender. Okay. And that you don't want them mushy or anything like that. You want it just where it's nice and tender. Now you, we've made a lot of soups. You make a lot of soups, as you know, as we were growing up. And this is this is one that I don't really recall. So where did we get this recipe from? Well, this one here again, when uh, uh, your aunt Linda in Fargo gave it to me. Okay. In fact, and I think she got it from her daughter Pam. Oh. That oh, okay. you know they uh, their family just really likes it. So we're gonna just saute like that, and it'll probably take about five, you know, minutes or so. Okay, our onions and celery looks like it's sautéed enough. So we're going to just add uh, three tablespoons of flour. And then we'll stir that a little bit until it's blended. And that's just a little bit of a thickening. Okay. Doesn't take very long. There. And we're going to add one can of chicken broth. And if you don't happen to have chicken broth, take uh, two cups of water and just add some of your chicken base, okay. uh, you, uh, um, bouillon cubes or something like that. Uh, and about two tablespoons to the two cups of water would be about right. So we added that in there. All right. And now we're going to add two cups milk. So this makes a good portion of soup. Well, it'll make a, it, it probably would serve four to six people, I would uh, say. Okay. And that. Okay, now that, and that's going to start coming 
to a boil here a little bit, heat that up. And now we're going to add one cup of um, cooked chicken. Okay. Uh, you want to cook this before you put that in your uh, into your soup. And what I had here was probably two small chicken breasts. That, okay. The work. And there you could pretty much just uh, put it to your to your liking. If you like a lot of chicken in there, add a little bit more. If you don't, you know. Did you or, add any seasoning to the chicken before? When I know? made the chicken, I added a little pepper and salt to it. Okay. And that. So when this comes in, then we're just going to have to, uh, we add that. And uh, we're going to add five um, strips of cooked bacon. Okay. You know, I just made that nice and crisp and, and crumbled that. So we're going to add that into that there. And the next step is um, our one, uh, box of... You know, Uncle Ben's long grain wild rice. This makes it really easy. You can certainly uh, buy regular wild rice okay. and use that. It'll just take a little bit longer to cook because that does definitely take longer. So, so we're going to add that in there. And we're also going to use the seasoning packet there. A lot of times if you would go out and buy all the ingredients that are in a seasoning packet, you'd spend quite a bit of money with all those different ingredients. You know, until you are able to get that all, you know, you have to buy big quantities just to be able to get just a little bit of teaspoon of this or teaspoon of that and does make a difference. Yeah. And it says to um, add pepper and salt to uh, taste. It doesn't give you any quantity. We'll add a little bit of pepper, but I'm going to suggest not adding too much salt because you have salt in your chicken broth and, and your rice here, there, you already have uh, salt there too. So you don't want to get it too salty. And if you're on, you know, a low sodium diet, and then the bacon also is in there. So you already have salt there. So I'm going to just add just a little bit of uh, pepper. I'll just put a little bit on the palm of my hand here. And about a half a teaspoon. Okay. And then all we need to do is let that simmer. And so that about, is a real quick, easy about 10 minutes, yes. Very quick and easy. So, well, let's check. The oven is beeping. It sounds like our coogan should be done. We'll turn that off and let's. You want to open up the oven for me? And, Certainly. Oh, oh, that's baked up nice. Oh, it did. And this time I don't have to worry about it spilling. Yes. <laughs> They're running over. But even as full as we had it, you can see how the cream and egg mixture, it isn't runny, it bakes up and it, it really sets. So we've got that done. All right. Okay. Turn now this is, 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 is cooking a dessert that, I mean, you have to let it set for five, ten minutes before you cut it so it, it um, to, to set sets a little up. bit. Um, it's best to have it set for, you know, uh, until it cools off a little bit to cut okay. it. But I think we are going to be fine, you know, to show you what it looks like okay. and stuff. So it smells wonderful. And while that's setting, let's just, our soup I think is done. Okay. And let's check that out because all it does is takes about 10 minutes to simmer and that looks really good. You know, it ended up to be a little thicker than what I like the soup to be. So I added another cup of water. Okay. And if you find that you don't like the soup as thick as that, just add a little bit more water. Okay. And that. So let's just check that out. And I'll put some in a bowl. And it makes a pretty hearty soup. Even adding a little bit of water to that, it, it's still quite, uh, you know, quite thick. And it, it, yeah, it's not, it's not a. A runny soup, but it's not a stew. That correct, either, yeah. We don't want that. So we've got that soup, and I'm going to just take this and let's see if we can just cut a little piece here and show you. Okay. All right. This is so the got, apricot side. That's the apricot side, and you have. Just that filling, and like I said, you, you know, your crust, like I said, doesn't get quite as high as a yeast uh, dough will, but it, it still, you know, gives it a nice, uh, you know, nice crust, but who doesn't like more fruit and filling on it than crust? 
Okay, we have our one pan Coogan and our chicken wild rice soup with that bacon. It just makes it, it's oh. awesome. It smells wonderful and I'm sure it's going to taste just as wonderful. Yep. We got to thank your sister-in-laws, my aunts, mm -hmm. for submitting yep. these recipes to us. Um, thank you Aunt Eileen and thank you Aunt Linda. To get these recipe, recipes and to submit your own recipes, please go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com. And we'd also like to thank the workshop for our sponsor. Thank you, and good cooking in your kitchen.